Hi and welcome to the webinar. This is uh, Five Secrets for Natural Hair Regrowth. My name is David Rogers, Masters of Science in Nutrition and founder of the Nutrient Balance Center, which is a nutrition clinic in Michigan. I'm also the author of the book Reloaded, Natural Hair Loss Secrets for Safe, Effective Hair Growth. That last part of the book title got cut off there at the bottom. First, I want to start off with my story about two years ago or so I started to notice my hair falling out and uh, being a nutritionist I decided to do a lot of research regarding uh, nutrition uh, avenues and supplements that can help to restore the hair and up until about a year ago it got worse and worse until it looked like this and you can see significant areas of hair loss in the temple areas um, and then after I uh, figured out a full protocol on how to regrow the hair using only natural methods. Ten months later my hair looked like this. You can see it's much more full and thick. And uh, if you look over at me on the left hand side um, you can see that my hair has remained full. Uh, this current picture, the, the after picture, was taken about three months ago. Yeah, but both pictures were taken uh, immediately after a haircut using the same level of attachment. So there's uh, the old one again, and then the after. There's a picture of uh, the book cover that's uh, available at re reloadedhair.com or at uh, amazon.com. Okay, for an overview, hair loss does not just happen due to aging, and that's um, the common belief in our society that, especially for men, um, hair loss happens only because you're getting older when in fact there's underlying imbalances in the body that cause hair to become thin and then it becomes thinner and thinner and eventually it's released from the root and this is caused by uh, four main things nutrient deficiencies, thyroid hormone imbalance, prostate hormone imbalance, and calcification. There are many secrets in my book but five of them I'm revealing to you here today and for some people these five secrets will be enough to restore your hair to completely full and thick but for most people um, in order to completely restore your hair you'll probably need to experiment with uh, many of the other therapies that are listed in the book question is does this therapy really work and I get a lot of skepticism because a lot of people don't yet believe in the power of natural remedies when in fact they do work, they do have research to back them up. So the three things that I um, use to verify that uh, a natural therapy works, firstly is scientific research. And in the book there's 36 citations, 35 of them uh, directly show links to government approved research studies, hospitals, or major universities. Also I take a look throughout the web. I do a search of the web for testimonials, uh, both for um, supplements and for diet changes that help with hair loss. Lastly, I do my own experimentation, which you saw the results of earlier. So we're moving into the hair loss secrets. This is number one. It's EFAs, which is essential fatty acids. And in order to optimize hair growth, you must be consuming the correct amount of essential fatty acids. Essential means that your body must get it, you must consume it every single day or you're going to run a deficiency. But it is essential that you eat the two EFAs, which are omega-3 and omega-6. And omega-3 is the popular one that everyone knows about. It comes from fish oil, flaxseed oil, walnuts, chia seeds, etc. Uh, before I go into this, let me just let you know about the difference between plant omega-3s and animal omega-3s. Plant omega-3s are ALA, that stands for alpha linolenic acid, and animal omega-3s are DHA and EPA. And what you need to know is that in your own body, DHA and EPA are the active fatty acids, whereas ALA needs to get converted into DHA and EPA before it's active in your body. So um, it's easier for your body if you 
have actual fish oil. And the other source of omega-3 is grass-fed beef. So for that reason, you can see that it's more important to be directly consuming animal, animal versions of omega-3. Uh, therefore, fish oil is your best choice. And my recommendation is between 1,200 and 1,800 milligrams per day. Uh, the United States daily recommended intake, which is called a DRI, uh, for women it's 1.1 grams, which equals 1,100 milligrams. For men, it is 1,600 milligrams or 1.6 grams. And so what happens is people are taking maybe one fish oil pill, and they're not realizing that they're getting a very small amount of fish oil compared to what I'm recommending here. Uh, let's move on, and I'll come back to this slide. Uh, for example, let's say that this is on the back of your fish oil that you just bought. If you take a look at the bottom there where it says EPA, 360 milligrams, and DHA, 240 milligrams. So your job is to take a look at the fish oil that you have, if you have one already, add up the EPA and DHA, and see what you get. So right there, adding them up gets 600. And then see how many soft gels in the serving size up at the top. There's two of them. So two soft gels equals 600. That means one soft gel equals 300 total EPA and DHA. So you're getting 300 per pill in this one. Um, I'm recommending that you get a fish oil that has at least 600 milligrams per pill so that you don't have to take a whole bunch of pills throughout the day. A couple of good brands, I just went back to this slide. Uh, take a look at the second area here, Jaro EPA DHA balance and natural factors rx omega-3 factors both of those have 600 milligrams per pill uh, the dose that i recommend is two to three pills per day but you should start with one and ramp up so one pill for about five to seven days uh, then move up to two pills for the same amount of time and then move up to three and then stay at three or you can go back down to two if you feel that that's helping you enough secret number one is a two-parter because there's two essential fatty acids so we're moving into omega-6 and for omega-6 fatty acids most people consume the wrong type and it's easy to consume the wrong type because if you go to your supermarket and you look at all the processed food all, up and down almost every aisle um, the wrong type of omega-6 is what you find those are corn oil canola oil cottonseed oil and soybean oil and the reason why uh, those are unhealthy is because um, at the factory where they're made or put into the bottles, they're highly heated. And highly heated oils can become trans fats. And these are also highly processed. And highly processed anything forms ages. Of ages, what does that mean? It's advanced glycation end products. And ages are things that actually age you. They are um, inflammatory. They help spur on uh, disease markers. Uh, they lead to heart disease. Uh, they can lead to diabetes, cancer. All, all types of di diseases are um, further spurred on by ages. Also, um, all four of those oils, corn, canola, cottonseed, soybean, come from genetically modified plants. And that's also something that uh, you should be uh, aware of because genetically modified plants, the reason why they genetically modify them is so that they can uh, be resistant to the latest pesticides. Uh, for example, soybean that's genetically modified is called Roundup Ready soybean. Um, and that means that it's, uh, it can take more and more of Roundup, the pesticide. So you're getting tons of chemicals when you eat um, soybean oil that's in a conventional food. Instead, I recommend having healthy, unprocessed omega-6. This is what your body actually recognizes. That, that would be coming from raw walnuts, raw pecans, raw sunflower seeds, virgin sesame oil, and virgin sunflower oil. So if you're having the nuts or seeds, have one to two handfuls per day. If you're having the oils, have one to two tablespoons per day and then you will be sufficient in omega-6. Why do essential fatty acids work for hair loss? They have been proven to normalize the production of 
DHT from its precursor hormone, which is testosterone. And uh, for those of you have, who have done um, a good amount of research in hair loss, you know that uh, mostly for men, but to a small degree for women as well, um, there's testosterone, which is the male hormone. It gets converted into DHT, which is um, affecting male prostates, but it also affects uh, hair growth and it uh, clogs the hair root and uh, causes the hair to fall out. In addition to this uh, correlation between DHA or DHT levels, reputable organizations correlate uh, the deficiency of uh, essential fatty acids with dry hair or poor hair growth. So there's a couple of reasons why essential fatty acids are very important for hair growth.